Well, today we're going to talk about how to downsize in retirement. So some of you may be in that phase where retirement's right around the corner and you just want to make life simpler, want to make sure that you've got everything covered that you need to. And so downsizing in retirement is something that appeals to you. So there's some steps to that. So the first thing is you need to recreate your retirement budget. And so factor in things like your hobbies and what the cost of that might be per month, per year. Things like healthcare expenses, uh, that's a biggie. And so making sure that that is in the budget. Uh, travel, if you like to travel, making sure that you have that in the budget as well. House cleaning, if that's something you don't want to do yourself, which I don't, uh, you want to pay for, then that can be a luxury, but for many of you, that's what you want to do. Make sure that's in the budget if you're getting someone else to do that. And other house chores and things, uh, yard work, landscaping, that kind of thing. Then you've got utilities, gas, maybe you still owe on your home, hopefully not. Uh, groceries, other expenses in life. So just list all those things and really help to make the budget. And uh, that's really, really going to be important for you to kind of figure out what is your lifestyle going to be in retirement. Yeah, and I think it's important too, when you build that budget, you want to build an inflation factor into mm -hmm. that. Because if you think about just inflation this year, obviously it's at a 40 year high, but even if we weren't having an issue nationally now, really globally with inflation, you know, cost of groceries and whatnot, it's going to go up a certain percent every year. So really applying inflation to that. And then I think step number two is really important is to determine your retirement income gaps. And usually when you talk about an income gap, um, people will say, well, what is an income gap? I don't have an income gap. Well, typically uh, the average couple in retirement is going to experience two income gaps in retirement and planning for both is really vital and super, super important. So the first income gap, let's talk about that and generally what an income gap is. An income gap is just the difference between what you get from guaranteed sources, Social Security, and if you're fortunate pension. enough to have a pension. <clears throat> so let's say that you you are fortunate enough to have a pension and between Social Security and your pension, that brings you $4,000 a month. Well, if your standard of living is $7,000 a month, you have a $3,000 a month income gap. And that income gap, in our view, needs to be filled with income that is guaranteed, not a maybe or a hope. Mm -hmm. And what you don't want to be is in a position where if the market's down or volatile like we are now, you're having to sell securities in a down market to fill that income gap. If you have the work done on income up front, you shouldn't have to worry about the volatility of the market. Now, the second income gap, Pete, and is also really important to plan for is at the passing of a spouse. Usually, if you have a couple, one of the two Social Security is going to go away. If it was the primary um, income earner that had the pension, the pension is typically reduced. Sometimes that goes away. So the second income gap and what you really want to plan for is the passing of a spouse. So those two important things when you're talking about downsizing retirement, it's really a short term and a long term aspect. Yeah, so if you're thinking about downsizing, one of the, the biggest assets that you have is your home. And even if it's paid for, there's a lot of upkeep to keep that home going. So one of the things you need to determine is, is this really the home that I need to live in or we need to live in during our retirement years or should we downsize early on to get in something that's more affordable, something that's less upkeep, less expense to keep going and that kind of thing. And uh, downsizing means that you need to get rid of stuff that you don't need or want anymore. And many of us have way too much in our home and it needs to be purged. My wife is really good at that, by the way. I'm not as good at it. I always think that, oh, sometime in the future, there's gonna be a use for that. And yet, you know, she's really good. And I have to kind of leave the house and let her do her thing. So I won't even know what she's throwing. But I do know that it looks better and I actually feel better going into the home when all of that is out of the way. If you haven't used it in a certain amount of months or whatever, chances are it really isn't something that you need anymore. And so uh, there's a book out there, John, 
written by an author you probably heard tell of her too, Marie Kondo, uh, best-selling author, and her book is The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. You'd think that my wife was the co-author of this or something. And, and it says to ask yourself the question with each of the items that you're considering uh, in your home, uh, does this item spark joy anymore? And what you really want to make sure is that your wife doesn't pick you up and say, does this item spark joy anymore? Some of the stuff that is in your home is just taking up space and is creating the need for a bigger home than you really need. Yeah. I mean, if you haven't used it in a couple of months or a couple of years, or a couple of decades. It's <laughs> it's like amazing in our business. We deal yeah. with uh, estates all the time, mm -hmm. and some of the stuff yeah. that is in some of these houses is unbelievable. If you have not used it in two decades, <laughs> three decades, there's probably a high likelihood you're not going to use it in the next decade. But really, cleaning out your house. Stuff that, be honest with you, is probably junk, mm -hmm. um, is a good step in helping you determine and decide whether you want to downsize and what that's going to look like. Well, let, folks, thanks for watching our show. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to see all of our latest episodes. And for a lot of additional resources, you can go to retirementtalk.com.